Sarah, do you want to go ahead and take this next uh, news story away? We have some Final Fantasy 16 details. Yes. So um, when Final Fantasy 16 was announced at the PlayStation conference, Hidden Deep, and I believe it was a Japanese interview, Square had teased that they would be putting a teaser site up in October that would explain the, the story and the world details of 16. And at the time, it was just going down the internet, and people thought it was just like a fan of a rumor. Well, jokes on them. It was legitimately true. And they Square Enix dropped a teaser website on uh, in like the beginning of October that literally explains all the important characters, every important part of the world, which I'm going to guess you're going to be able to go to all of them, and the main story. So um, uh, in the Awakening trailer, which is the first trailer that was shown at the PlayStation conference, there is a young kid. He looks about a teenager, and there's an older dude. They they kind of look the same. Everyone thought they were the same person. It was confirmed that they are the same person. It's it's the main character named Clive Rossfield, which actually is like a so like not Final Fantasy name to me. It sounds like the character of like a Resident Evil game, kind of. Like, to, to butt in real quick, um, people were making fun of one of the character names a while ago. What was the name? Like Chadbert? Or something. Yeah, it was so, like Chadbert, and then the end up being a joke. <laughs> so yeah, so what, yeah, it's just because um he looks <laughs> like um a uh, Final Fantasy fourteen character named Ardbert. So so there's not going to be anyone called Chad Ernie. <laughs> yeah, um, but so uh, what people didn't realize, I guess it, I guess it was hidden in the Japanese version of the trailer. Like Clive called that younger kid uh, his brother, and people were like, "Oh, so it's his brother," and it was confirmed that yes, Joshua is his younger brother, who is dominant of the phoenix summon which i guess is like oh these people have these summons inside of them Mm -hmm. um and then uh josh can turn into the phoenix when he fights but the main i guess the kind of twist of it was that clive was expected to be the dominant but he wasn't and it was his brother instead so he was tasked to protect his brother um and the little girl with them her name is is jill who was actually taken from a warring faction state and like raised to like grow up and be like a uh I can't, I, if, I, if I remember she was meant to be like she was meant to grow up in the family and then sent to like sent back to her home state to convince them to like join the other family if i remember like it's so it's so weird like it's such a non final fantasy thing but it's incredibly mm. interesting and if people want to go to the website and dig into it there's some deep as fuck lore that like they're telling us really early surprisingly really early like they're just well, laying it all down well so as you stated like, hmm? I'm, I'm sorry go ahead mesa oh this is so the summons work like naruto uh so from what i could tell <laughs> the uh, I, I relate everything in my life back to naruto <laughs> So from what I could tell from like reading into it and like rewatching the trailer and stuff, mm-hmm. the spirit of the summons are in these people. So it's more like Digimon season four. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, all Jinchuriki, you know, with the Jinchuriki inside, you can turn into it. But but then yeah. I guess like it, that's the thing. It's like if you kill these people, do you gain control of the summon, or does that not happen? Like, there's so yeah. many questions now raised by this like story update that they put yeah. out. But it's incredibly interesting, and if people want to like read it and get lost in the like speculation, like I would, like like I was doing, it has beautiful art on it, like beautiful art artwork of like all of the characters, and they look so pretty. It's just like it's Final Fantasy. You're you're, you're gonna look, you're gonna see pretty little looking people. Uh, going back <laughs> like, to what you're saying about those details coming out um, relatively early, uh, back is um, back to that SDGC. Uh, podcast uh that you that you were on uh you rightly pointed out that the game's actually much closer to uh a release date than uh, most people would suspect and you kind of called that out by by it having uh an english dub yeah so at the time when i'd seen the trailer between my tears because i that trailer literally makes Mm -hmm. me cry because it's beautiful like the music everything i realized it was in english and I was like, that's so weird. Every time they they announce like a Kingdom Hearts game, it's always in Japanese with like English subs. Even the Melody of Memory trailer, original one, was in Japanese with English subs. And I was like, that's weird. Oh, that's that's kind of funky. And in my brain, I'm thinking everybody else has figured that out or like everybody else has like pointed that out. And I was recently on the SGC cast, not recently, but like kind of. And when we were talking about it, I pointed it out. And at the time, everybody gets quiet, and they go, oh, we didn't 
I didn't realize that. And the chat grows super quiet. Like, no one says anything for, like, 20 seconds. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, everyone's like, uh. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, how the fuck did no one notice this? Like, I'm like, am I the only person who realized that this entire trailer w- was in English? And when you think about it, Square especially, I feel like English is some of the last voiceovers that they, like, shoot before the game's done. And my suspicions were actually considered right because a recent job listing that went up on Square's website pretty much said the base game's done. They're just doing extra polish on boss fights and something else, if I remember. Like, it's like, like except the base game is in a finished playable state. They're just needing extra people for polish and for tweaking boss fights. So, like... Uh, it's probably going to release at the end of 2021 or like middle 2021. And when, and when it does happen, just remember that I was right. <laughs> I, I think we'll in do. case for people that are somehow unaware, uh, Sarah is pretty fucking smart. And this is the equivalent of oh, a you. sage mode from Naruto. Oh, I don't know Naruto, so I don't know what that means. So thank you. Wow. It, but yeah, like it's, wow. to me, to me, and to be completely serious here, if Square starts to do this more often, like starts to announce games and they're only like a couple months away or like less than a year away, I I would be down for that. Like Square announcing shit like 10 years early and it's like, oh, sorry, you had to wait 15 years for Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> here it is. Like if they start doing it where it's like, a ga- Dude, they um, announce a game under a year and then it releases in under a year. I would be one hundred percent here. I for think, but Beth- I think Bethesda is kind of the um, kind of the progenitor for uh, for kind of pushing that because what was it Fallout Four? They announced at E three. They're like, yeah, it's out in three months. Well, it's like to me, I feel like that was sort of a fluke because then that because then the next year they announced Fallout seventy six and then they were like, oh hey, we're also working on the Elder Scrolls six. Did it? Here and and yeah. the Fall seventy six showed... came out twenty eighteen. I want to say. All I remember is it was back when I was at GameStop and we had to ship back sixty copies of it. Ouch! Like we had to <laughs> like I I remember I had to pack up sixty copies of Fallout seventy six and slap them in a box. I won Fallout seventy six in a contest. <laughs> and you didn't even touch it, did you? I played it once as a joke. <laughs> Apparently it holds up a lot better nowadays. But um, but yeah, if Square starts to follow that model and they release stuff faster or they show stuff in more of a finished state. Because like another thing that people forgot was Fallout 76. Uh, yeah, not Fallout 76. Final Fantasy 16. That was a gameplay trailer. That was a gameplay and cutscene trailer. Like, And granted, there wasn't a HUD, but we saw gameplay. We saw cutscenes. They weren't like CGI shit. Yeah. Like that was legit in-game assets and in-game cutscenes. So I feel like if they start doing that more often and are like, hey, here's actually a finished product that's not fully done yet, but you can play it. Like I feel like it's definitely I think good I think Square's gonna get better release goodwill, kind of. At least we can hope so. Because I just really want 16 to come out. Like I've like if I wasn't already getting a PlayStation Five, I would be getting one for sixteen. I think you're pretty damn lucky that you've got that PS Five lockdown. Just as how I think anyone would be lucky to have a uh, Mesa as a trophy husband. Speaking of trophies, oh Jesus, <laughs> that was that was a horrible segue. <laughs> I mean, I give you an A for ever. Mesa's a pretty alright guy. So wow, okay. Put that on the I, resume. Pretty all I, right guy. I meant that in a way. <laughs> okay. I I am rated okay. You know I didn't mean it rude. That, you're, you're good. Yeah, Please put that on your resume. Numbers are bad for us. Tell you what, I'm gonna you're good. 